It's almost Halloween. <laughs> You unlock this door with a key. The key of imagination. Beyond it is a game show. The contestants of which do not know the answers in advance. They must enter the dimension of the mind. <laughs> You've just crossed over into the show and tell zone. <laughs> Welcome to the Show and Tell Show. It's, it's a, a fucking, fucking game, game show! show. It, damn right it's a game show. You know because you tuned in. You do every week, and as we do every week, we ask some silly questions, and we get some silly answers, don't we, guys? Yeah. Yes, so. Uh, we have some fresh faces on the panel this week, and we're going to start right. with some introductions. All the way to my right, say your name and the horror movie villain you most identify with. The horror movie villain I most identify with. My name is Chris Justice, and the horror movie villain I most identify with is Freddy Krueger. You are all my children now. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Um, we're going to jump over to my closest. Say your name and the horror movie villain you identify with I the most. I be the closest. I'm... Evan Luongo, and I'm conflicted because it's going to go one way, but then I got to go another way. <sighs> if there's it's a cartoon me. made about it, it's going to be way, yeah, it's In other me. words, so, he wanted all right, Freddy. All right. I got to go Captain Spaulding. That retarded hangs out in Molly's fruit stand? Because, quite frankly, it's my future. Um, but, <laughs> I don't even know this guy is. That said, from the heart, I want to go Pinhead. Just might come true. All right, so we have Pinhead to my right, and joining us for the first time on Show and Tell, in our middle seat, say your name and the horror villain you most identify with. My name is Kelly Maston, and the horror movie villain that I most identify with, I guess, is... Stop kicking. <laughs> it's not me. Sorry. It's not me. It was, it was not. Never mind. Um, so the horror movie Everyone villain that I would most one. like to be is, I guess, the Blair Witch. Because <laughs> I wouldn't have to oh. do anything. That's good. She's just economizing. Sit in the woods and smoke weed and just pretend to scare people. You know she throws them. You can't sit in the woods all day and not smoke weed. Um, and that that kind of plays to the next part of the question, Chris. Kelly has shown how she identifies with the person. You said Freddy. How do you identify with Freddy? How do I identify with him? Yeah. Um, I like to live in an imaginary world. So. <laughs> it's because you're in my world now, bitch. Welcome to my world, bitch. Welcome to my world, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and Freddy usually <laughs> comes into people's dreams. And I met him at a very young age and... I was horrified by him. and uh, That's not a good age to meet Freddy. No, no. He won, too. He was coming for you. So, um, yeah, I think that just me living in my imaginary worlds like Freddy likes to play in, I think I would have a lot of fun in that fantasy land. So, yeah, that's how I identify with Freddy Krueger. Fucker. Right. Evan, um, I used Chris to sit is over talking there. about a, a fantasy land of a pedophile. Mm-hmm. Wait, what is your fantasy Killed in, the your, kids, Paco. The, in your situation with your pinhead? Why, why do you identify with the... Well, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be fantasy. I would say I, I would relate to it because it, it's all about the suffering. And I, I am a person who does like to push myself through suffering as shit. <laughs> I run marathons, half marathons, do dumb shit like hike, fucking crazy shit. I I just torture All things myself. That, that was in Hellraiser too, right? Hellbound, Hellraiser two. Yeah, yeah. pinheads yeah. now. All I of a mean, sudden, uh, yeah. 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 yeah, yes. But I I just skin so off I just you know take their skin off. <laughs> yeah, you know, and also I you know. Slice animals until I see their organs and various components. Okay, yeah. See, things. now, the, now lines. we're seeing behind um, the lines You know, I, here. I am familiar with blades. I'm familiar with slicing flesh thinner than you can even imagine. Thinner than human hair, in fact. Um, you so, teats. you know. No. You know, so, like, I'm up the levels. Sure? Um, and I'm sure you, you're no stranger to a Rubik's Cube. 
No, was, not at all. I was going to be the cheese to this sandwich, and um, nope, I'm all set. Uh, cheese witch. <laughs> You said that you were the bear witch <laughs> of the forest. And now, there has to be more Sam. to her than just smoking weed, because I've heard legends, I've seen movies. What are you most known for? Like, what's the thing that everybody pins on you that you may or may not have done? I don't know. Building weird shit and just hanging it there? Like, after I smoke weed, why is anybody just going to build shit? Well, actually, no. That's actually... Are you suggesting that in um, the movie, all the arts and crafts are just done by a, a baked woman? <laughs> Probably. It's a I lot mean, that would scare that a bunch way. of other baked hikers. That's true. <laughs> I mean, isn't Blair Witch known as like a hoax? Like, you're a hoax. You're not even real. Like, it, as much as like you're we're... You're not real either. No, you're but like we're... Weirdo, ugly no, dude that No, but we've never stolen dreams. people's like good time at no. a theater. We we went there. You went there. You paid your money. You sucked Johnny Depp And we Johnny gave Depp you a, a, a fantasy. You, didn't, you weren't even there. That's right. That's right. You, Johnny Depp was there. You don't even were. exist. Like you, you, told, you took the public's money and just left. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I just have I a problem with the Blair Witch. Witch. Evan, they, they, they're talking about a, a Johnny Depp wet dream. Yeah. Do you have anything as visually stunning as uh, 21 <laughs> Jump Street in Blood Sheets? What, do you, what are you doing? Sell me on the scariest part of your movie. Oh, have you ever seen like literally like the layers of flesh torn apart where you can like <laughs> differentiate each particular organ within a cross section? I mean, that's a it kidney, took me a long time that's a gallbladder. That movie, and now There's I'm gonna go home half and have nightmares again. You know what I mean? Things along nightmares. those lines. I mean, when you see it, I not only is it be beautiful, <laughs> but it is completely disturbing and grotesque. So it's like. It's amazing. Does it look like deli meat? Therapy session. Yeah, okay. not me. And it looks, it looks, it looks like wax. It looks fake. It doesn't even look real. All right, I have, I have one more question. I need to get an answer from each of you. Um, take as much time as you need because this is going to be probably be the, the last chance you get to speak to it. Why do you kill these children? And we're going to start with Chris. Let Chris speak. Um, Chris likes to talk over people. Let's let. Oh, I, I don't appreciate that Who, at all. You, first of all, I'm assuming all, all of children. you kill children. All the children. I kill more than children. I don't know why you're just grouping me in with like some sort of like you know. I will kill anybody, and the reason I do that is because I was teamed up against and burned alive because I was a supposed problem in the neighborhood to the parents of the other kids. So. I have a vendetta, and I have a good reason. It's almost like everything I do is in self-defense. It's more like I'm just coming back to get a little retribution for what was done to me. I'm sorry that you guys couldn't finish the job, and I'm still here to finish you off, but don't go to sleep. Burnt up like a weenie. And it's His name is Fred. Yep. Evan, why do you kill your, your prey? Like, you know, they invoke it. They want to say, test me. They want to see pain. They want to see things. Well, we'll show you things. We'll show you things. Evan, could you look right in the camera and say that you will show them things? Help. I will show still you sights. Me, still I will show you things. All Come right. with me. Kelly, we all know that you've murdered more children than <laughs> you can fit on a school bus. Do you have any particular reason why you do it? And if you could look right at the camera and make it creepy, we'd love it. I mean, have you seen how they act in a restaurant? <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure that's enough said. Anytime, you know, you see a butcher knife and a child running around screaming, madly, Whoa. you just want to pick kids them up. Out of her place. Throw it at them. It happens. And they're eating off the kids' menu. It takes like seven kids to order one entree's worth of food. That's not fair to exactly. the Exactly. And one adult comes in, and then they all come in, and yep. then they throw food everywhere, and then you just hope they choke on it. Uh, not only do you hope they do, you lure them into the woods where you slaughter them for their parents to never find again. Um, isn't, just, isn't she just like a wind forever. blowing up a brus like a rustling leaves? That's all that her, like the Blair Witch, it's jealous. just a... I love when shots are fired. Nothing. It's no, nothing. It Why are we even talking Blair Witch? Well, like, how can Blair Witch... You didn't pick dick action fucking figures. Jason? I mean, you didn't, didn't pick none figures. of those other people? It was sticks. The dude from Psycho that was his mother? I mean... <laughs> Wanna play? Yours is the dreams of teenagers. I mean, like, both of yours is lame. I am the wizard master. Whoa, eternal bro, torment. Bro, whatever you want to say, every you're coming after me. Hers there. is rustling leaves in a woods. I, I realize that. Okay. Like, let's be yeah. over this right now. That's what I'm saying. Go. This ain't even a horror movie. Yeah, that's it's a, a comedy. Movie. Okay, cool. It was not a comedy. a lot of people. 
All right. So I think I have my answer here. I bet that's Target. why. You were scared. Maybe I was. Yep. You were scared, and it's bringing up weird. Our panel has we're done nothing but argue correctly, but at the end of the day, there can only be one answer. One set of points for the round. And Freddy Krueger is my favorite horror movie villain of all time. He haunts your dreams so that after you leave the theater and you have bad nightmares, you could think that you could be killed. But Chris, you said it yourself. It's a fantasy. It'll never happen. So no point to Chris. (laughs) Evan, you talked about a hellish scape of chains and unlocking pain that you've asked for. That's the most terrifying thing in the world to me. Kelly, I'm not going to stand in the corner. Evan gets the point for round one. Evan wins. This Eternal is suffering is mine. I don't know. I don't even know. You must play me again. Um, best two out of three. Fight. Welcome to the show and tell show. It's, it's a, a fucking, fucking game show! show! Oh, fuck yeah, it is. We're going to ask some silly questions. We're probably going to get some silly answers, but we're always going to have fun. Isn't that right, guys? You know yeah. yeah. Let's get to meet our contestants today. We got some new ones. Starting on our far left, say your name directly to camera. John. We're excited to meet you, John. <clears throat> to my immediate left. Evan Luongo. Hi, Evan. Hi. And to my right. Senor Chris Justice. He is Mexican as can be. We're trying to be diverse <laughs> here on the show. And one of the more diverse things on the show are the questions. Wouldn't you guys agree? Oh, yeah. Well, our first question tonight is a doozy. If aliens were to land tomorrow and you had to show them one film, from our archives as, as Americans. What film would you show the alien race? We'll think about that for a second. Ooh. Is anybody ready to go, or can I pick on a kid like in high school? I'm ready to go. Chris, what movie are we showing the aliens? I mean, obviously, we're showing them Independence Day. We're showing them what kind of shit we can do to these motherfuckers. <laughs> you ain't gonna come into our house and dictate terms. We got Will Smith. All right, that's a good opening. We'll keep the opening short so that we can delve further into the films as we go. Uh, to my immediate left is Evan, and we're going to have him go second. I feel like I was going to kind of go in a different direction, but then I realized the shirt I'm wearing, and I'm going to go Predator. I'm going to yeah! go the same fucking angle. Like, motherfucker, if you bleed, we can fucking kill it. That's true. I, girls in their p- that, That's the only oh! exception. That's the only exception to being able to kill them. John? Do you know what? I'm feeling... Popped in my head, so I'm going with it. American Graffiti. (laughs) (laughs) Why not? That is absolutely great. We have some serious classics. Most of them, the alien is murdered and killed. So let's start with the exception to that. John, why would we show the aliens American Graffiti? Well, you know, obviously, you know, George Lucas then then goes and makes Star Wars after making that humble thing there. And we can say, you know, this guy caught Americana, but he's also... Alien friendly, you know. As long as you're not, as long as John's you're not going to the dark, you're not. As long as you're on the dark side, you know. And uh, American Solo's in it. Right Harrison Ford is in both films, and yeah. um, you know, I think it captures, you know, what life was simpler. You know, I guess it's the '50s or whatever. Very happy day esque, yeah. and you know, I don't think they would feel threatened by us. You know, if that's they might like some of the cars too. Uh, Chris, you picked uh, a scenario where we attack and kill these oh, yeah. potentially benevolent creatures that came to us to give us cures to diseases. Mm-hmm. When you sit down with the alien president or whatever and you hit play, are you going to stare directly at him and give him shit? Or are you going to, how are you going to handle this with the aliens? No, I want him to, I want him to like befriend me, but realize what we can do. So I'll open the popcorn and I'll just look at him once in a while. I'm like, huh, you see that? Yeah, that's what we do. What's that? See this guy? He doesn't fuck around. So I will, I will befriend them. But I want them to know you're not dictating the. Ter- We're in charge. This is our planet. I don't care about your technology, and we will tell you what's what. All uh, right. Give us the codes. You're taking the lead here, and you're controlling your own fate, very much like the movie Armageddon. Uh, speaking of controlling your own fate, does any of that happen in Predator? And are you going to feel uncomfortable watching this with an alien? Uh, absolutely not. Predator is one of my favorite movies, and every time it's fucking on, I have to watch it. Have to. Okay. It's a must. It's like Rocky so, Four. It, yes. So I'm 100% going to sit down with them and just be like, this is an awesome fucking movie. Enjoy this movie. And if you take offense, go fuck yourself. It's America. Fuck you. Yeah. And that's I, it. I feel like that would be watching, like, Django with Al Sharpton, kind of. <laughs> <No>? <laughs> I mean, listen. 
is is the alien a pussy faced freak like the predator? If, if it is, I'm fucking it. Exactly. Well, maybe. But if it's not, it shouldn't take that way. Right? Then you get to see how bitch these aliens are. Like, if it gets all okay. sensitive over that, it's like, dude, how many other aliens have you encountered in your intergalactic fucking travels? The only millennial ex uh, aliens I can think of were from The Explorers, but you didn't what? name that movie. So we're going to go to John. John, you're sitting down with Gazorpnop, the head of the Alien Federation, <laughs> and you press play on what's probably a VHS tape if we're walk talking American graffiti. Are you uncomfortable? Are you, dis are you talking and explaining things to him? Yeah, I'm, I'm pointing out some things to him and letting him know that this is really capturing um, and that we don't capture aliens. We never have, as far as I know. Not in America. Yeah. And that, you know, we're, we're good folks. You know, we like to go to diners and drive around and, you know. Cruise for chicks. Yeah. And who for knows? Love, these we like to, like, love, not war. Make now, all right, I'm going to challenge you while we're still talking okay. to you, John. Yes. If they're watching the movie and they're like, oh, so what you do is you travel around and try to fuck people. What if they want to do that to you right then and there? Because they're Ooh. cruising in their cars. You know, I'd have to see which way they swing first because that name was sort of not... Like, I couldn't tell if it was a female gender or a male. Yeah, yeah, like a gen yeah. yeah. Dude wop, whatever seemed, you know, I don't know. So, yeah. you know, I'd have to, you know, talk to them and then, you know. And the beauty is that, like, I could make up some mating rituals, too. They don't know. They're from another planet. I could say, <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to do stand on your head and do some spin moves first before we, we get down to it. You know? Aliens usually have a lower education in this country, so you're right. <laughs> Evan. Yes. The Predator, it seems like a very tense movie. Do you, do you suspect that they're going to be enthralled and happy or nervous that you're projecting that this is their fate? Okay, well, maybe to soften the blow, we'll watch it near all my Predator action figures, right? So then they'll see that this is just Americana. This is just classic. Okay. But like, like Justice said, there'll be subtle tones of like, motherfucker, if you bleed, we can kill it. We will kill it. It happens. I agree. You know? Right. Chris, you've been quiet unusually characteristically. <laughs> Thank you. And a couple other leads. Would you like to jump in here and either shoot down an argument or? Well, I mean, I, f I, mean, I feel like Evan copied mine. Like, he wanted another alien to kind of show we can kill aliens. So, like, mine was the original. I mean, obviously. And John is trying to tempt me to, like, switch mine and pick, like, Annie or something. So, I, will, I don't know what he's trying to do with American graffiti. But, like, yeah. There's no, I mean... We need to take control. We're Americans. We cannot just let these aliens come here and take our country. So we got to show them who's boss right when they get here. And, like, well, I'm not willing to, to negotiate that. I will eat the popcorn and sit on the couch and smile at you. But you are watching that and knowing the, the, the fate of your whole entire whatever it is. Would awesome. you make them build a wall? Like, did they have to pay for it? Like, uh, no, um, <laughs> A space wall? Yeah, a space wall. I don't think they get the concept of our money, so I don't think they'd do anything for us like that, to be honest with you. But I, I just, uh, I don't know, man. I, I feel strongly about this, though. I just don't want these aliens thinking they can come in here and take over America. All right. Space I think, aliens. I think I've got enough information for this round. Um, Chris, you talked about the aliens coming down and watching Armageddon with you. And we it was all Independence know... Day. Oh, damn. Same movie. You know what? Both of them are forgettable. No point. So we're going to move on. <laughs> Evan, Predator, we're talking about if it bleeds, we can kill it. And I don't know that I would feel comfortable watching a movie with an alien that I didn't think that I could potentially overcome and, and save myself. So we're not going to do yours because you said Americana is what's important, and there's nothing more Americana than your film, is there, John? I don't think so. And you kind of look like Harrison Ford a little bit. So yeah! Point, yeah. Yeah. He does look like Harrison. He looks like someone else, too. Dippy Harrison Ford now. He's like a real jerk over there. Chewbacca didn't want to come. <laughs> but I jerked him off anyway. <laughs> Welcome back to the Show and Tell Show. It's, it's a, a fucking, fucking game, game show! It sure is, and we fucking swear. So get ready for some crazy questions and some crazy answers. <laughs> On tonight's show, we have, to my left... Dave Caggiano, a.k.a. Davey Poplock and Drop It Crockett. Oh, shit. Oh! Let's keep him on my left. Uh, Evan Luongo, a.k.a. I got nothing as snappy as him. Machete vigilante. Yeah. That's pretty that's a pretty good one. 
To my right, Tonzo, you want to answer who your name is after I just said it? Yes, I am Tonzo, uh, a.k.a. Tontalini, a.k.a. Peach Bikini, a.k.a. Tonton Wellington. Like, the list goes on and on. And so does our show. So we're going to start off the first question of the day with Dave. Dave, if you were to pick a horror movie to show to a 10-year-old kid to scare the ever-living shit out of it, what horror movie would you pick? Uh, um, I would pick, uh, yo, I'd pick that, um, Michael Moore documentary about how the environment <laughs> is fucking ending in the world is over. Because let's face it, we're in the middle of an apocalypse right now, mm. and Michael Moore was a little off, but essentially right. And then at the end of the movie, I'd tell him the whole, you know, this is a scary movie, and then at the end, I'd be like, honestly, it's a true story. That's terrifying. <laughs> Evan. Same question. Ten-year-old boy or girl, we want to scare the ever-living shit out of them. What horror movie are we going to show them? Okay, I'm actually going to I'm going to use some strategy this time around, and I'm going to steal from him a little bit. And I'm going to show the kids that uh, all the food documentaries that prove that all of the food that they eat isn't real food, and I will make them terrified to ever, like, eat anything again, except from, like, vegetables and meat. All right, so Evan's going to make 14-year-old girls look skinnier. <laughs> Tonto, do you have a horror movie in line? Yes, I do have a horror movie in mind, and I'm thinking just because of like like personal reasons, like a video that scared uh, a movie that scared the shit out of me when I was a kid was Cat's Eye. Oh Jesus! Yeah, and because of it, it, like what freaked me out so much about it was that when you go to sleep, there's like little people and like things happening like on your chest, and they go, they like go in your nose and like fucking like root around oh, in oh, your yeah. brain. Fuck. And I, I, there was something about that that fucking just drove me nuts when I was a kid. Like like I'd fall asleep like thinking there was a whole thing happening on my fucking chest with the three little fingers like. Closing your oh, nose. Oh, yeah, yeah. Closing, closing your, nose. your nose and, like, you like Fuck. kids are dying. Like, yeah, that's horrifying. You. you didn't live it's with the uncle, It's you? not real. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> that's terrifying. These are three movies and three scenarios that I can't imagine. But part of the ambiance of the room is what adds to the movie being scary. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. yeah. Yes. How would you set up the room to either coexist with your, with your theme or to just make it terrifying? Mm. Uh, to coexist with my theme... I would do it. I would have the the TV in the bedroom, you know, the kids all set up, the night lights going on. Maybe you do a projector, some sort of thing, where that's the last thing that the kid's gonna see before he falls asleep, and it's just gonna fucking fuck with them mentally. Not even like a familiar doll or anything. Oh yeah, no, <laughs> no, nothing. Just just a comfortable setting. Where it's, when they get in that comfortable setting, they're going to associate it with that fucking memory. And every time they're comfortable, they're going to be fucking horrified. Uncle Tonzo, can I watch cartoons first before I go to sleep? <laughs> no. no. Right. Nothing but cat's eye. <laughs> Evan, how would you set up the room? I would rent a few 400-pound people. I would fill the room with Doritos and the various foods, the cereals, the things I would be trying to terrify the children yes. with. And I would just have the large people that I rented just gorging and feasting in front of them. The large people you rented. Yeah. Did they charge by the hour or the pound? I would have to find out. I don't have the logistics right now, but that's the direction I would go. Dave, you look ready to answer. What do you got? Yo, know, I just want to say, Tonzo has an unfair advantage with the ambiance because Tonzo looks like the serial killer in the prequel when you learn his origin story. Oh, yeah. Like, his mom fucked him up, so now he fucks up people and their moms. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Tonzo looks like that guy. So he's scary enough. Yo, I'm, wa I'm putting on the environmental documentary with the kids, and we're watching it with Al Gore. And it's just going to be just like the movies where the, youth, the good guy the whole time ends up being the bad guy. Al Gore is this environmental guy and then you learn he has like a one billion dollar jet in his house uses as much energy as all of Africa. Yeah. <laughs> so we're watching it with Al Gore. He's got a lot of oil in his hair too. Yeah, a lot of oil. Petroleum oil. <laughs> Alright, so typically in a horror movie there's like the Freddy Krueger, there's the Jason, there's the Michael Myers. Who, Tonzo. Who is the... <laughs> 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 the stereotypical villain. <laughs> Who is the Chucky in your your scenario here? Yeah. Well, the Chucky in my scenario, in there might have to be some fact checking going on, but for some reason, I feel like there was like a little Indian boy that had some sort of dagger, and he was the guy that was like going in and Did he kind of like stabbing your brains like through your nose hole. Ooh, that's like a pharaoh. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's yeah. scary. <laughs> no, it was, it was different type of India. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's two. Evan? Uh, mine would be the ulcerations and wounds that would be like oozing from the, the large people. That's your that's your protagonist. <laughs> well, no, that wounds. I thought you needed the thing that was like terrifying. The that, Michael that they Myers. Would have you said like yes, the, you the, like are your antagonist. I guess you would say like who's the. Oh, okay. Well, um. Oh, that would okay. Okay, yeah. That'd be like Ronald McDonald yeah. and like uh, yeah, Kentucky Fuck Fried yeah. Chicken dude yeah. and Man like McSees. the Wendy's girl. Yeah. Yep, all of them. All of them. Like the an amalgamation. The Burger King. Yeah, all. Yeah. Of them. Like Wendy that. with yeah. the fucking pigtails. That's a good. That's a good monster. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Dave, do you have a monster? Yeah, <laughs> Michael Moore. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing would be creepier than that fat, bloated human being, just heavy, just mouth breathing, dude, in the back of a room while he fucking tries to spit statistics at you. Well, and he's got like a sandwich. Yeah, he keeps taking bites. Of. Yeah, and he's just ripping cigarettes. <laughs> just fucking filling. Kind of sounds like Sonza. <laughs> <laughs> um. I think I have my answer, unless anybody wants to shoot down somebody else's argument. You guys seemed like kind of on board with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah there seems like some sort of odd camaraderie yeah. going yeah. on here. Every because yeah. I think everyone went a little bit of a different angle with uh, good good ideas. I don't yeah. know. I, let's I, face I, I it, justice them. isn't here, so we're all yeah. on the same side. Oh. You know, spirits are high. Yeah. <laughs> God, that guy's just all the right. worst. Well, the winner of that round is going to go to Evan. Thank you. Oh, I, I decided it based on what we can sell as like the main character here. We have to have leave this kid with a message. We have to like it has to be an icon of terror. And Michael Moore is incorporated in his. He's a big fat slob that eats McDonald's all day. Yeah. But he will die. Yeah. <laughs> and the little kid with a knife who I mean, I can beat up a little kid with a knife even when I was a little kid. But microscopic. You can't see it. You don't know where he's going to fucking attack you from. He's yeah, going to go through your nose. You can every time mind. this kid sees Colonel Sanders or Ronald McDonald, it's going to cry and be in a panic sweat, which I'm yeah. thinking is the goal of the question. Yeah. Microscopic. You could roll over and kill him in, by accident. You know, it's like Indian in the cupboard. Like, I'm not, you know. What are yeah. you going to get? Is that Indians? a scary movie? <laughs> AIDS if is, you're an Indian. AIDS is <laughs> microscopic, and I'm not afraid of AIDS. So Right. Well, it's, that's personal preference. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, point to Evan. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, if you like that round, check out this one. Jaws has been killed so many times in these movies, but we're going to keep making them. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to kill Jaws in the next Jaws movie? We oh. give a minute to marinate, but you almost mm. slap adapt in, so let's start with Evan. Yeah, so I'd say, like, okay... So he's going to be coming at me, right? I'm going to cryogenically freeze him with some liquid nitrogen spray, right? Then I'm going to run up to him in <laughs> Shao Kahn fucking style, sledgehammer his fucking head. Bam! He's going to shatter into a million pieces. Uh, It'll be awesome. But aren't you in the water with him? Well, he'd be coming up at me, though, right? Okay. So he's going to come on the boat. As soon as he comes up uh, on the he's boat. He's going to come on the boat? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, liquid nitrogen. Everybody comes He's the there. <laughs> and just like Quint, instead of Quint going down, I'm, I'm Shao Kahn in his fucking head. I love it. Tonto. All right, so I'm thinking that the new Jaws is going to be bigger, bigger, better, better. Uh, this thing's huge. It's not going to take one person to take him down. It's going to take an entire fleet of people to take him down. And uh, what they're going to use as a weapon is almost uh, these giant solar panel type things that go on the top of the boat, and they're just going to melt Jaws in the water with the like a ant with an magnifying glass and they're going to surround him and all harness the power of the sun i like that though that's yeah. going to that's going to sell in that market chris how are we killing jaws in our reboot of jaws uh we're going to kill him with traffic <laughs> 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 we're going to put all Don't the kill world, anyone. we're putting every every tunnel we can under under the water and we're just going to he's going to run out of space next thing you know he's just going to be flopping around in like a little swamp somewhere looking for air and some little kid just going to walk over with a pencil and be like yeah and just end him and that's it that i mean there's no more plausible scenario than a shark being killed with traffic i i, I like where everybody started we're at yeah. the starting point okay yep. now evan almost got to this point but i want we to t take a step further there's the part of the movie where we're killing jaws we have to say something cool when we kill jaws right you mentioned quint what are you gonna say when you kill jaws in our reboot 
Oh, I gotta go. I already got this just because mine's so fucking over the top cheesy. I gotta go super cornball and I go ice to meet you as I <laughs> 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 gotta go ice to meet you. Okay. That's pretty cool. He's right. spelling meat like M E A T, like he's <laughs> like, a piece yeah, of meat. Like too, ice like to that. meet you. Well, that's yeah, a whole debate on one of these you. shows about whether or not fish is meat, but we that's neither here nor there. <laughs> Tonto is here. Tonto, how would you have killed Jaws in our new movie? Uh, that I already answered that. Mm. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the appropriate question is, what would you say? And because I'd be essentially frying him with these solar panels, if at first you don't succeed, fry, fry again. Ooh, Damn. Ooh Chris. Damn. Do you have a cool catchphrase that you want to end your movie with? <laughs> Yeah, I just, I mean, it's something like if I, I drive for a living, so if I'm in traffic, this would be something I would say to him. So I would just look at him through the tunnel and go, kill yourself. <laughs> and that'd be my thing. That would be a good in, inciting yeah. line of dialogue. Yeah, see you, later. see you later, Jaws. Oh, man, this is great. Or you can do that one, too. See you later, Jaws. Like, Those real nice, like being happy about it. So Jaws is now driving a car. Like, what the fuck is going on? No, here? no, no, but we're killing him with traffic, so I'm going to be just like, that's something I would yell as a boss. But what is window. it? Is it submarine traffic? How are you killing him with traffic? <laughs> no, tunnels. I already said that See, in the first no, second. I said we put all the tunnels into the water. With I two thought tunneling him, him with traffic it. was the climate change, you know, the exhaust, the carbon thing, and then the ocean fuck rise, the temperature yeah, changes. Yeah, but he does not even listen to my freaking fucking car. I tunnels, told you exactly how we were doing know. it. He was it's running insane. out of space. It's insane. <laughs> there were so right. many roads underground. He right. was running out of space. We're actually challenging the logistics of some of these scenarios, okay? That's yeah, a that's fair what thing. I'm saying. Like, what are you guys talking about? You're going you gonna hit him with a, I mean, get I out disagree. Of here. I think we should move in the direction of that, okay? Which is the most plausible? Is it you <laughs> using the the big <laughs> Is it is it killing a shark with the big dig? Is it yeah. <laughs> Operating both a sledgehammer and a fictional cryogenic gun no, at the same time. You, you spray or, the, the liquid nitrogen comes in a thing. I have to freeze shit in it all the time. What I'll do, I have a lick. I have a fucking two fifty-five gallon drums of liquid nitrogen. I roll them. He's jumping up, punctures it with his super sharp teeth. He's got rows and rows of teeth. He does, right? Uh, Bam! That. He freezes. I'm freed up because I just rolled them, bitches. I have my hammer ready to go. You Boom. could have it strapped to your back. That's okay. Yep. That's, nice to meet you. Nice right. to meet you. Tonto. Hi. <laughs> Can you answer the very same question that I presented to Evan? And how was it presented again? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tonto, we've seen how probable Evan's is. Is yours probable? You're talking about a giant shark, right? Giant shark and giant solar panels, all forming a perfect circle, harnessing the sun in the right way, and these things just, ri like I said, it's the ant and the magnifying glass theory. All right, that makes you a lot of sense. You a physicist? You need a physicist. Yeah. <laughs> of course, they'd have to be a physicist, but <laughs> that would be one of the characters I would write in. We're going to wrap this up soon. You guys have one last opportunity to shoot oh, holes in the other people's oh, arguments. Was that, was that oh yeah, we'll give you, I'm sorry. Why don't you do the same thing that the other guys did? <laughs> <laughs> no, what about it. yours is probable? Nothing. Nothing. None of these things. Are. Evans is probable. Mine. I mean, who, have you ever been in traffic? Have you been in Cambridge? I'll put a bike lane in the uh, in the ocean. I'll put a bike lane in the ocean. That that fucking shock will be losing his mind. And I mean, put a little tunnel in there where they can see it through and and, and whatever. Fucking bike lanes. Like a swan boat lane or something? No, like a t tunnels that, like, well, like, you ever see that, what, uh, Jaws 2 or 3, where they had, like, the glass, yeah. you know, they can see you, so, like, you know, if you see a couple of bicyclists going down there and you're a shock. That's pretty good that you referenced the original trilogy. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Thanks, man. Okay. We're ready uh, to Probably do the part where we shit too. on each other's arguments and see which one rises from the ashes, so it's open. <laughs> shit on each other's arguments. Well, uh, I don't think we really need to shit on justices because it is just it's friggin fucking recorded. stupid. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not good at all. It was by far it's the worst terrible. one. Terrible. And uh, I, I love you, Tonzo, but I'm sorry. You got to get a physicist. You need giant helicopters. You need the fucking solar panels. I mean, is Elon Musk in your movie? Elon Musk's not in your and, movie. And the movie's not written yet, you know? <laughs> Mine just requires two 55 gallon drums of liquid nitrogen and a fucking sledgehammer. Oh, which you can buy in a fucking wow. drugstore. Sounds Listen, like a Craigslist. Why, you know? Roy Scheid, why didn't Roy Scheider think of that? I have access. 
All right, that that actually did it for me. I don't know if anybody at home got anything out, out of that, every time. but that made it super clear to me. Um, everybody was against Chris's from the beginning, so that made me eliminate three to two. <laughs> uh, now that we're on with just Tonzo and Evan, we're talking about probability. You're saying these giant solar panels. All solar panels is giant because they're not efficient, so that would make the most sense to me, and that would be a cool way to see Jaws killed. Yours is T2. I love it, but it's T2. I want to yeah. see a shark melt in the fucking ocean and then just dump butter on it. Yes! So Tonzo's up two, Evan's got one, and Chris is so good at hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is the part of the show that everybody gets those little butterflies in their belly for because it is the show and tell portion of the show. Mm, I love this part. And we're going to start with one of the most interesting <laughs> presentations that we've had up until this point. Greg, what did you bring for show and tell? Well, this was something that was purchased recently by me from the ancient lands of Amazon. Ah, and what this is, oh, is Amazon. this is an official Amazon Komoto, Ooh. and it comes with the matching shorts. <laughs> and really, this outfit to me dictates about where my summer is about to go. I love it. Like, I'm out on, this is a nice, you know, kimono that I can put on in the morning time, go out on my porch, smoke a joint, have the coffee, and I'm just looking dapper. In Lynn. You could do Capoeira in that. Yeah, it's it's silk. Feel it. Feel oh, yeah. it. Feel, the, feel, feel it. Feel it. The thread counts even better down here, isn't it? It's twenty seven ninety nine and on Amazon. I mean, how good do you think it is? I love this. This is very personal. You're wearing it well, and the kimono is one of the most impressive Japanese articles of clothing. I would argue. I don't know about you guys. Does anybody have anything that could potentially rival? Skin over oh, silk and just sex. I don't know what you guys might have brought. Oh, bro. Greg looks like if Buddha's dad was an Irish cop. <laughs> you, you fucking. Oh, God. This pasty. You're a hot dog, dude. I don't know You're how to hot, compete honestly. with that, but I think I got something. It looks like you put it on the table. Can we get a, can we get a view of that? Maybe we a... can get a view of this. This is a. My uncle gave me this, obviously. This is a pillowcase. It unzips. You can put a pillow in there. And he has sewn all the pool patches that he has won in local tournaments throughout the years on this <laughs> double-sided, <laughs> double-sided <laughs> pillowcase. He even has on some of them. You can't really see. He'll write in with the match. It was a 96. He won 5-2. to two. And uh, this just shows how little of a life he really led. It was it was mostly spent in a legion basement shooting pool and Can I hold smoking it? secondhand cigarette smoke. So this this right here this isn't a condom for Shaquille O'Neal right no, now. Yeah. This this, that's not what he does. No, with it's that. not long enough. It looks like this come in the bottom of it. Does that have any relevance? No, that's to the... well. And what would a pool guy do with that? He would put his balls in there. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, at the end of his career, he put his pillow in there and then laid himself to rest forever. But he, uh, yeah, I guess he could put your pool balls. I bet in a there. lot of these end up in a coffin. Yeah, I mean, this one was supposed to. I stole it right before they shut the door. Everyone had left the room, and I was like, I'm taking this. And oh, that this was the is, end of that. This so. is great. They're actually sewed on patches. Yeah, sewed too. on patches by a man who probably couldn't recite the alphabet, but was able to sew these patches onto a pillowcase. So that's what. It smells like a degenerate gambler. Yeah, that's it's awesome. It smells like crippling depression. And speaking of degenerate gamblers, we have one more contestant left. Dave? Yeah, do you know how many fucking tears have been shed on that pillowcase? At <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I got, things. So in honor of, um, we're missing one of our regular contestants today, as you guys have obviously noticed, are the beloved Evan Luongo. Uh, God rest his soul. <laughs> he, he did, in fact, eat him. And when he, in, in during the carnage, he spat out a piece of Evan's soul, which is crazy. And I happened to snag an actual little piece of Ev Evan Luongo's soul. And this is it right here. This is the wow. this is the soul. This is the being of Evan Luongo right here. This is what it, this is what shit. when he takes off his skin mask. This is what actually is lays underneath it, and that explains a lot of what you've seen on the show. And now his soul is trapped in that object until you choose to release it. I think Dave has it. No, now. I just have it now. This is a part of me. Wow. And now it's since he ate him, he gets oh. he gets it. Hey, you're gonna oh. be you're yeah. gonna be late for your match. Oh. <laughs> This is wonderful. This is one of the most crazy, exciting, and like variable 
episodes of Show and Tell that we've ever had. I'm so proud of that Show and Tell item. The arguments were great. The Show and Tell items were great. But unfortunately, we can only have one winner, right, guys? That's right. So I've deliberated the points. The points are going to Dave here. He won two rounds, and then it came down to he has Evan Soul. And if we ever want to see Evan back on the show, we have to be nice to Dave. So Dave, Dave wins Show and Tell tonight. Hell yeah. yeah. Wardrobe of the night goes to Greg Olson, though. That's Thank you beautiful. guys so much for tuning in. This has been amazing. And get ready for episode <laughs> But as we always end, every show and tell show with... We love show and tell!